Hello YouTube, this is Night of Misfortune bringing you yet another replay from the game of Supreme Commander 2. This is again coming from League Season 2. We have a interesting match. Uh, haven't casted for a while, I do apologize for that. Honestly, haven't been super motivated to do so. Uh, so I'm kind of two weeks behind on these uh, matches of the week. So I'm going to record two of them today. And then hopefully at the end of the week I'll record one for this week as well. So I do apologize for that, but I did want to say thank you. We just reached 70 subscribers, so that's amazing. And uh, I'm really, really hoping that we could maybe get 100 by the end of May. I think that's a little ambitious for, um, you know, given how fast my channel has been growing. But I would really appreciate if you guys shared this channel with uh, your friends and, you know, tell them that it's not just about Supreme Commander 2. I mean, I do try to do other games as well. I think I'm going to stick to mostly co-op games though for now, uh, but uh, yeah, uh, I would really appreciate if you guys gave a like, comment, and uh, especially a subscription to my channel uh, if you enjoy my content, that is. If not, just comment down below and say how much you hate it. All right, well, uh, let's go ahead and jump into the game. I uh, will give a shout out to one of these players uh, shortly. But uh, this is a round four match from the league, as I said uh, before, but both of these matches will be from the league round four. So let's go ahead and uh, get this match going. Um, pause at th five seconds, game speed three as always. Let's go ahead and press, press play in three, two, one, play. Let's introduce our players. So in the bottom right, we have, I'm not sure if I casted a game with him before, but it is, of course, our white AM commander with the name of Fox Termelon. And he is uh, going to be plopping down two air factories. So a good idea here on Edge Desert. By the way, I forgot to talk about Edge Desert. Edge Desert uh, has been picked around 56% or sorry, banned 56% of the time and picked around 28% of the time. And we have, uh, let's see, Aeon is, of course, favored on this map, followed by uh, Cybran and then UEF. Um, this this map really reminds me a lot of etched uh, Emerald Crater for some reason. Um, yeah, I just I don't know. Uh, so and his opponent on the left, uh, the man that I'm gonna shout out today is a uh, Blue Train Bandit, who is uh, spawning as a Blue AM Commander. He's plopping down one air factory and two land stations. Now he did a really cool set of videos showcasing this match from his perspective on his channel. I'm gonna put the link down below. Go ahead and check out his channel as well. He does some other games as well, so pretty cool stuff. Um, and I just wanted to show up this game and maybe point out some things uh, that I noted from this uh, match. Uh, I guess not all of these will be match of the week because they're amazing games. I mean, this I think this was a pretty good set of matches, but. I do also try to teach you guys in my replays, uh, you know, what works and what doesn't. So overall, both of these players have started pretty decently. Uh, you know, Fox Melon has gone to Air Factories, which is on, on a big map like this. And we've seen, you know, rainbows and everybody do uh, similar builds on maps like this. And in fact, the whole map pool for the season, when you look at it, is pretty uh, air based. Uh, honestly, it was done with a reason. So I really want to try out uh, this set of maps because this data is going to be used for the tournaments that I'm going to be hosting. By the way, if you have not heard, the next tournament will be, I think, at the end of July. We're still going to be, we're going to be deciding some dates, but uh, just be on the lookout for that. Uh, Signups will probably go live in uh, at the end of June. Yeah, I usually give a month. So be on the lookout for that. I don't remember exactly what date it is. I can't really pull it up right now, but uh, it is on the Discord. It's all over Discord uh, servers, or you can just message me and ask when the tournament is expected to be. I think it's the last weekend of July, but don't quote me on that. I, I don't remember exactly. And we're still deciding, so it's not a set in stone. All right, so we see um, a blue train uh, going one air, two land, which normally I would say is is not a good idea. But we see here that he is actually getting um, anti-air on his car box. Now that is actually a very smart idea. Um, pretty good. Uh, honestly, it resembles the strategy of Cybern and it, it, it can be powerful, uh, but you just can't, you can't lose 
uh, air. And if you lose air like uh, he did, you can get into a little bit of trouble. And as we see here, he has actually stopped air production uh, completely. Not sure that's also a good idea because as a result here, when you lose land or sorry, when you lose air, you are going to start losing out on these expansions. Now here, um, um, I'm not sure why Fox is, is bombing this. I think it's actually because he wants to prevent this land push, which actually could be fairly powerful if Blue Train decided to uh, push forward here. He would be able to spread those uh, Harbox out. And by the way, beautiful spread on these Harbox. Um, could be a little better here with just a couple of these uh, to completely spread them out. But I think it's just beautiful. There's just not enough anti-air power, especially because there's shields now from Fox and also there's uh, what are the flares and uh, one air factory does go down it really needed that shield and uh, another air factory I think it's a little too late at this point you definitely if you want to catch up on air you definitely need to go plop it down as soon as you want to do so and um, before any land factories that you're plopping down so I always tell tell players it's sort of like playing poker with air. Uh, you have to you have to mean it when you go air. So you can't just go willy wishy washy, you know, uh, air strats. You you have to know what you're gonna do with it, and you can't just sit back with um with that uh, with that air. And uh, Fox, I think I did cast games with him. I always point out how great his movement with his air is, and uh, that's that's why that's what makes him a really strong player. Uh, you have to have a rounded game, and to have a rounded game, you have to have great air play, and air play is defined by your movement of your air. So, really good play from uh, Foxer Melon. And uh, honestly, at this point, he can snipe his opponent. And uh, because I know the outcome of this particular match, I'm gonna speed it up to five here. Um, and uh, he could also be bombing all of these expansions, but he knows at this point that he's won this game. These Harvogs are dying at a faster rate and they're produced at a slower rate than these planes. So at this point, there's just uh, there's no way for Blue Train to really come back. Uh, and he's bombing factories, which uh, this is uh, unfortunately to say kind of toying with his opponent here. He could go for a snipe here and, and probably take out this commander pretty easily at this point. He's got nothing but air factories, so that's, that's crazy. And another thing um, with this land, um, is uh, when you do go land like this, you, you really have to push. We talked about how he could have done a, a lot of damage, especially if he got teleport at this point, which we're 12 minutes into the game. You should really probably have teleport uh, at this point. I forget the exact timings for it, but he could jump around this, this fortification here. Uh, this is honestly a, a really a waste of, of mass by Fox. Uh, this is uh, not something you want to do, um, especially against air. Your opponent went air, you don't want to clump them up like this. All uh, blue really needs is a couple of MMLs earlier in the game, of course. Right now they would just get bombed into pieces and this would be worked out uh, very, very simply. Uh, if he got teleport, he could go around and start taking out, uh, doing some damage. Again, these these Harvogs are not going to die quickly, even with all this air, unless Fox does an amazing game, uh, an amazing job uh, microing them, splitting their damage. Uh, they're not going to die that easily. So, fortunately, Blue Train Bandit does uh, indeed go don't go down after uh, Fox manages to snipe him in game one. So we're going to go to game two, and uh, we'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. Hello. Hello everybody, welcome back to a game two between Blue Train and uh, Foxter Melon. This one is going to be on Iskillian Coast. Iskillian Coast has uh, has a lot of data on it, so it's very um, confident, I guess, now with the data. Uh, been wanting to experiment more with this map because I really do think it has potential as, as one of those staple maps. So let me know what you think down in the description below. Let's look at the stats. It's been picked around 19, or sorry, 43%, 42, and banned it to around 22%. And that's not just in this league, it's in uh, overall. These, these are all statistics for overall since the beginning of, uh, basically since uh, Serpent's Open Winter, which happened, uh, of course, in December. So six months of data, actually. Wow, that's uh, actually very impressive. Um, so we've got, uh, let's see, UEF, uh, Aeon being picked the most on this map, which is not super surprising. Um, I also messed up on the last map. Um, I was actually giving you 
the no i was no i was doing it right okay so iskillian coast we got fairly like balanced stats this is why i think it has a lot of potential and why i brought it back for another season you know uef isn't doing great but honestly across the board the uef is not doing great I think UEF has potential, like, I, I really, really do. Sometimes I watch these replays, and I maybe I'll do them w one time, and I just think UEF has such great potential on these maps. Um, and honestly, I've even been playing UEF recently, and it's just... Anyway, I'm, I'm going on a tangent, I apologize. Uh, so, 30%, uh, less than 30% for UEF, but other than that, 50% for Cybern, 54, 55% for... Aeon, not a lot of matches, to be completely honest, considering that there was close to 20 total games on here. Um, uh, quite a bit of them are Aeon mirrors on this map, so, you know, not the greatest set of data, but another, again, I want to figure out what works. So, let's go ahead and uh, jump into the game. I have paused at 5 seconds at game speed 3. Let's go ahead and pause in 3, 2, 1. And uh, let's introduce our players once again. So uh, we have our white Aeon commander. He's actually been playing nothing but Aeon this, uh, this season. Um, Fox Termelon. He's going one air factory once again. And Fox actually has the highest win percentage um, uh, in the SCS at uh, route 83, 82%. So very, very impressive from him. And uh, of course, of course, so far up until round four, he has been undefeated. So let's see what happens in this game. His opponent, of course, the return of our blue commander this time. He picked Aeon, and he is going to be putting down three land factories. Our player, Blue Train Bandit, again, he's done a perspective video of him playing this match. Go ahead and check that out, like his channel, subscribe to all the things. He's going for a rush, but he's a little hesitant. Um, he did not go Harvox this time, which actually would be really good. Uh, if you're going um, three land facts uh, against air, that would be really, really nice. Fortunately, he spent, uh, I think he probably spent some research into something. Can't really quite tell what exactly he's put research, but I imagine it's uh, cost time, build and cost time. Now the problem with that is, again, you want to save your research points until you actually need them. Especially when you're going such a uh, niche strategy, um, you, you want to be sure of what you're doing because you're not going to have mass or even research points to switch out. And the game is going to be decided fairly early when you're doing a three-fact rush like this. It is going to be decided pretty early. Um, usually, usually is going to be decided pretty early. And you won't have time to switch, so you have to be 100% sure with your research when you're doing this. So I think here he could have switched very easily into Harvox, and again, probably ran around uh, Fox or Melon's base, but Fox actually did a good job here. He only went one air factory, which is gonna help him here, and uh, then plopped down two quick land factories. So he has a very decent amount of tanks at this point, which is perfect when your opponent has went with so many anti-air, uh, what are they called? Krachtau. I don't even know how to say that. Now, a little bit of poor micro from Blue Train here, too. You want to have your commander in front, but his commander did uh, fall down quite a bit of health. Um, and uh, unfortunately, he's not even get taking shots at this point. Love to see this player's uh, reclaim some of the mass. But once again, this is this is going to be decided here pretty soon. And it's not looking great for uh, Blue Train because he has lost quite a bit of tanks and he does have quite a bit of anti-mobile anti-air, which is not going to help him here. Now Fox uh, altogether stops producing air, which is actually a smart, very, very smart thing to do because it's not worth it. It's not worth it in the short game to go air. If, uh, especially if you know your opponent has dedicated so much to non-ground firing uh, units in lieu of you going air. So very, very smart response. And um, I've been saying this time and time again, the thing that makes stronger players or the top players strong 
It's not necessarily micro. Micro and macro will help you, definitely. You want to focus on, you know, knowing your macro keys, knowing what, uh, knowing what's, uh, how to make yourself fast will always make you better. But what makes strong players strong is obviously knowing the game, but also knowing how to respond. It's knowing that when you open three facts, for example, just like I mentioned, you need to have research behind you that will allow you to go forward no matter what your opponent picks so or responding to your opponent when you're building air factories and you see that your opponent has a pretty strong land push with some anti-air it's very it doesn't do you justice to keep making air you, you have to know the function that your factories can actually stop producing air. They can be paused, they can even be reclaimed. There would be nothing wrong with him reclaiming that factory. I've actually done it quite a bit myself, getting some extra mass for it and just going for it. Nothing wrong with that. But beautiful switch to um, to land here. We saw Mog and Ra last season do same. His switches are amazing. That's why I believe uh, him. he is one of the top players right now. It's because of those switches that he does. And uh, starting out with two, maybe even one game, he went three air factories and switched into land, just completely shut it down. His opponent overreacted to his air and he switched into land. And, and at that point, you, you rolled over it easily and you don't even have to go research into your air at first you can just save it just in case you do have to go land and uh, it will help you quite a bit now both of these players did manage to spread out quite a bit so we do see a lot of expansions from both players and I'm surprised one thing that um, Fox could actually use air for on this map is to go and harass and I think um, he might realize this after the scout goes out uh, very very useful for scouting so Definitely might not be worth it reclaiming it, but it's just it's just an idea, I guess. And um, yeah, so this this plane is gonna go and scout the expansion, and uh, actually, honestly, kind of start bombarding. There's nothing wrong with bombarding this engineer, and that's gonna shut it down. There's nothing to contest there. This engineer won't even probably have time to build an anti-air factory, so we'll see what that plane does. Uh, so far, these players are fairly um, reserved in how they're attacking now. I, I would like to see Blue Train pushing a little bit harder into Fox because he was the aggressive player. One thing you want to do as the aggressor with a three-fact push, which is honestly amazing that he was able to go, that Fox allowed him to go into two more land factories and transition into that long game. Remember I said usually these games are decided pretty early. But I guess it's, it's, it's a resultant of... Um, the current meta after the patch have been saying this three fact rushes aren't really rushes anymore they're kind of standard so i guess i'm not that surprised but usually usually you when a player rushes like this it's decided fairly fairly quick and it's a really good indicator that both of these players are fairly skilled uh, that um the game has gone to you know 14 minutes now slowly but surely bombarding these uh um mass extractors away now blue train really needs oh wow i completely missed that i didn't expect him to uh die that quickly i thought uh, the game was gonna go on for a little longer i think there was a teleport involved but blue train does go down here and uh that means that fox Termelon does take this match two to zero and uh maintains his undefeated status so far so um yeah, so that's uh, that's the match. Let me know what you thought down in the description below. Again, I really try to have a healthy mix of, of replays that you know show you also what people can be doing and you know a high level what I hope to be a high level analysis so that you guys can get better and newer players can can rise up. There's actually a replay that I watched this week that um, on Etched Desert, I believe. Uh, yeah, an etched uh, yeah Etched Desert. That um, we saw a similar game to the tournament game, the 10 year anniversary game. There was um, Satisfied versus um, somebody, somebody pretty good. And uh, the same exact same setting, going land against air. The air player, of course, gets gunships and rolls over. 
And uh, even in this game, you could argue that Blue Train has done sort of the same thing, but his plan was solid. He had a solid plan. He just didn't use his bots early on and he didn't use his advantage that he did. You really have to use your advantage early game. That's why Fox Melon overreacted in that first game by building so many point defenses is because it's scary. That sort of push is very, very scary. So I would really encourage you to pass along to newer players these videos and, and hopefully you're learning from this as well and making your game better. I really, really already have seen many people improve and I know these people are watching my videos. So obviously I'm helping somehow. Um, if not, just let me know what I can do better. Maybe my understanding is off, but let me know down in the description. Thank you again for watching. I'm not going to show the league table in this video because I'm going to do another round four match just right after this. So stay tuned and uh, watch that video as well. So thank you very much and I will see you very, very shortly.